Ready to start taking advantage of Google Analytics, but not sure how to sign up for it or how to add it to your website? Well, if that's the case, you have made it to the right video. That's exactly what we're diving into today. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, we're going to be diving into Google Analytics, okay? So this video, this walkthrough, this one is for my beginners. We are going to dive into the very basic setup of this, okay? So I'm going to be walking you through how to sign up for Google Analytics and how to add that tracking code to your website. So if you need like a more advanced situation or more advanced uh, filters or customizations, this is not the video for you. I am not diving into more advanced event tracking and all of that stuff. We are gonna keep it super simple. Okay, so let's just get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is go to Google Analytics. Okay, so just a heads up here, in order to have a free Google Analytics account, you have to have a Google or a Gmail email address. Okay, that's just how the cookie crumbles. So what you're going to want to do is you can click on Google Analytics like right here, but it's going to make you sign in to your Google email address. Okay. So when you click on that and you sign in or you sign up or whatever the process is, you're eventually going to be taken to a page that looks something like this. Now, you guys are watching the recording, depending on when you're watching this recording. We're currently using GA4, Google Analytics 4. This is currently still being developed, okay? So your screen might look a little different. It's probably going to look pretty similar, but if things aren't like exactly as you see them on my screen, they're probably gonna be a little similar. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is create an account name. So I'm just doing this for one of my friends back home. So he owns a local business. Uh, so we're going to name it the business name in his instance, okay? So when you create an account, an account can have different properties. So if you just have a website, then you would just create like uh, like a business account or a, an account for like your blog or whatever it is. And then you can create different properties if you have a website or if you have an app or whatever, all of that. Most of my clients do not have all of that. So we're just gonna, we're gonna keep it simple, okay? So give your account a name. I usually name it after the business. And then all of that is usually pretty good. And then we can click next. And then we're going to give our property a name. So in this case, it is going to be the website. And then pick your um, time zone. New York, we are in US dollar here for currency. And then we can go ahead and click next and then choose the industry category and then the business size and then click next again. And then you choose your business objectives. Okay, so I actually played around with this so I could show you guys the difference. So these top four, one, two, three, four, you can choose all of these four or you can just choose this one and I'll show you the difference, okay? So when you choose get baseline reports, that's basically this information here. So like once you've already set up Google Analytics, this is where your reports are here. So these options, these business objectives are going to correlate with like how your reports are laid out. So I set up my Google Analytics 4 account a while ago, like when they first came out. And so I have the baseline reports. Okay, so I have these options here, but I tested it and I was like, hmm, I wanna see what the other ones are. So if you wanna go ahead and uh, click these, so I'm just doing all four of them so you can see them, your reports will look like this. And I compared and contrasted them and it's essentially really similar reports to this. It's just organized a little differently. And then there is a way, like if you don't select the right ones, you can go back later and add them, but it is kind of a pain in the ass, honestly. So that's why I'm just checking all of them, or you can just check this one. We're gonna keep this one super simple and just keep it with the baseline reports. So then we're gonna click create, 
accept the terms and conditions. Legally, I can't tell you to do that, but I am going to do it for this one. And then we come to a place where we have to choose the platform. Like, what are we uh, tracking data on? And in this case, it's going to be a website. So we're going to click web. And then this is your data stream. So we're just going to go ahead and pop your website URL into this box here. So notice it already has HTTPS here. So I'm not going to add that into this URL here. But if you have www, like when you copy your website URL and however it pastes, you might have www or you might not. Okay, so your primary domain might not have this. It might have it. I suggest keeping it aligned with whatever it pastes with. Just go ahead and delete like the HTTPS. Now, if your website is HTTP, we got other problems that we got to talk about. You have to get an SSL certificate, my friend, because that is very important for SEO and website security. We're not going to dive into that in today's tutorial, but essentially we want an HTTPS website, but we just don't want it to double up here. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. And then we're going to give this a name. I just like to repeat myself over and over again here. So that is what I do. And then once all of that is filled out, you usually don't have to mess with these, honestly. I've heard people on YouTube suggest to turn off the form interactions because the data can be a little funky and it can fire weird. So just for this one, I just know that my friend isn't really interested in tracking form interactions. So I'm actually just going to turn that off here and click save. You could always go back into settings and turn it on later, but this is just how I'm setting it up. So then we click create stream. Okay. So essentially what we've done is we've signed up for google analytics now if you have already had a google analytics account like you've had a ua a universal analytics account you can go ahead and just create a property instead of creating a full account so you would essentially log into your universal analytics google analytics account go to admin you'll get hit with something like this and click create property and then you're going to start there okay so it's basically just skipping one step because you don't have to create an account because you already have an account okay so i just wanted to mention that and then let me go back to where we were here okay so we've essentially signed up for google analytics but that's only half of the battle we now have to put this google analytics tracking code on our website google analytics is pretty good at being able to determine like what your content management system is so this website is built on squarespace so it's already detected squarespace here so it's already chosen my content management system. Sorry, my nose is like super itchy. Um, if it didn't get it correct, you can go ahead and click choose another and you'll be able to choose from these options, okay? So this makes it really easy. But if you don't have a website on any of these, which like this is a decent amount of the popular ones, but like it's definitely not all of them, okay? So what you're gonna have to do is install your tracking code manually. This is the Google Analytics tracking code. So we're essentially, we have to copy this and we're gonna have to paste it into the header of our website. So how you do this is going to de be dependent on which website platform you are using for your website. So I'm going to show you an example with WordPress just because that's the platform that I have some um, access to. So essentially one way that we can just use this like straight up install manually tracking code is we can use a plugin called header footer code manager. And so it looks like this just so when you're looking for it in like the WordPress repository, which you would just go to plugins and then search for it and then activate it. And then you can hit settings. And what you can do is you can add a new snippet and you can call it Google Analytics. We want it to be HTML. We want it to be site wide and we want it to show up in the header, all devices active. OK, so then we would just paste it right there and then just click save. OK, so that's one option that we can do if we have to install this code manually. And I'll show you just how it looks like on Wix if you want to install it manually. So on Wix, you can go ahead and click settings and then click custom code. And then uh, this client already has it integrated on their website. 
But if we were just like installing the code manually, you would just click add custom code, paste the code snippet here, give it a name, Google Analytics, all pages, header, similar, okay? And then click whatever my face is in the way, and then click apply. Okay, so you can see that was installing the code manually for two different content management systems. If you're using a different one, it's going to look a little different than that, okay? But the other thing is, let me just see. If you're on WordPress, I do know from experience, depending on your theme, you might also be able to add it into the theme customizer. So you can go to appearance and then go to customize. And then sometimes you can find it in the theme settings. The um, theme developers add header and footer scripts right into your theme. So you can click on that. And then you would just paste that manual code right in here into the header scripts, okay? But like I said, if your theme doesn't have that, then you can totally go ahead and install that plugin that I mentioned. Okay, so the other thing, so my friend here, his website is on Squarespace. So what we're gonna do is head back over here and all we really need is this copy tag, which I'm gonna copy here. But if we don't have this installation instructions brought up, it's the same thing right here is the measurement ID. Okay, so just gonna view that. Yep, same exact codes. We're just gonna copy that. And if your website is on Squarespace, you're gonna head over to settings. And then I think that they started putting it under developer tools and then external API keys. Okay, so you can go ahead and paste that API key right in here and click save. The other way that you can do this is you can install it manually on Squarespace as well. So you can copy this, head over to Squarespace, and instead of external API keys, you would go to code injection and you would pop it right here in the header. Same, same thing really. Okay, so it's really up to you on kind of how you wanna go about that. So the last platform that I'm gonna dive into in this tutorial is Shopify. So at the time of this recording, Shopify just recently added this integration to allow you to track Google Analytics on your Shopify website in the content management system itself. So basically you go to online store and then preferences, scroll down here and Shopify wants you to use the Google Channel app. So you would go ahead and click on that and you would install the app into your Shopify store. Once that's all good to go, you log in with your Google Gmail email account that we just connected Google Analytics with and then click get started and it will have a pop-up and you'll be able to easily select that Google Analytics 4 property that we just integrated. So it's pretty easy as long as you are kind of like not setting up Google Analytics accounts for clients or if you're an agency or stuff like that, that's when it can get a little weird. Uh, the other way, if you for some reason didn't want to do it this way, couldn't do it this way, you could also use the XO insert code, this plugin into Shopify. I think that it's free, don't quote me on that, but essentially you would add this app and then you would in like copy this install manually code and then paste it into the header area of this app once you download it. Okay, so that is another option. I would suggest maybe if you can doing this Google channel app, just because I'm pretty sure that the way that Shopify and Google set this up, it allows you as an e-commerce store to be able to track more advanced events. Okay, so if you're like just a basic store owner, you're just like, I don't even know what that means. Listen, I would just suggest doing it this way. This is what Shopify is suggesting. I did test at this time, they do have additional Google Analytics JavaScript, like a box here. I did test just copying this manual code and pasting it right into this box and then clicking wherever the save button was. And it seemed to work when I check the real time data in Google Analytics. Okay, so that did work, but I don't know if A, this cute little box is going to stay around forever because it did say that Universal Analytics will be moved from this section. So I don't know if all of this is going to be removed. That's why I think that maybe using the Google Channel app would be the best bet for that. 
So regardless of like how you install this on your website, now we have to track it to make sure that it's working properly. So we can click the X, we can head out of here, which I just wanted to make a note, if you ever had to get back to like that data stream, like that code, all of that, how you get back to that section is you go to admin and then choose the property, which we just created one property for this. And then you click data streams. And then this is the, the website data stream. And then so that is the tracking ID right here. Or you can click view tag instructions and the install manually. All of that stuff should show up there. So let's just close out of this and let's just double check that this is actually tracking now. So what you're going to do is click the reports button here on the left hand side and we're going to go to real time. OK, so you might see a notice that's like, oh, it's not set up properly, like there is no events or something like that. Don't freak out, especially if you've just installed the code into your website. Sometimes it does take up to 48 hours, okay? So if you're not seeing any data, that's perfectly fine. Come back and check in 48 hours. If you're still not seeing something, we might have a bit of an issue. But what I suggest doing is opening up and viewing your website in a new tab. But to be honest, I usually find that like, Opening an incognito tab usually works better and view the website. Once you do that, you should be able to see somewhere in here like a number one pop up or maybe you have a million people on your website and that's so great. But if you don't, then we just want to make sure that this is like collecting data and we're starting to see some data populate in here. OK, so it's really important to test this to make sure that we have installed this on the website properly. But once you do that, you are basically good to go. So we went over how to sign up for Google Analytics, how to set up your property, how to install it on your website, and then how to test to see if it's tracking. So like I said, this tutorial is a very basic overview. We did not dive into any advanced tracking or events, or I didn't even dive into Google Tag Manager. Okay, so if you are interested in using Google Tag Manager to set up your Google Analytics tracking on your website, you can absolutely do that. I just know that that process is really overwhelming for my clients, so I usually don't set it up that way, but there are plenty of other tutorials here on YouTube that will walk you through Google Tag Manager. But other than that, once you have tested it and you're you're starting to see some data you should be good to go so that's it for today's tutorial if you guys found this video helpful give me a really quick thumbs up and if you have any questions as always please leave a comment below the video i use your comments and suggestions and things like that to inspire new video ideas and if you're not already subscribed to the channel what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video.